Hello my beautiful creative souls and welcome to today's video. Today I want to share with you the decks I used the most during the spring season. I have in front of me a mixture of tarot and oracle decks, some new, some tried and true favorites. And I wanted to share with you kind of my experience with them throughout the spring, uh, flip through some of the cards for you so you could see them and just have a good old deck chat because <laughs> who doesn't love those? So let's get started. So first let's talk about my new decks that I got this spring. Uh, I tend to average about one deck a month. Um, sometimes I get more than one. Usually that's kind of the average it comes out to. So I started out the spring season with purchasing this one. This is the Squid Cake Marseille Tarot. Now I had never had a Marseille deck before, but I had been watching a few people and um, I was really interested in kind of the pips of the deck after really enjoying my experience with the Ritual Tarot, which we'll talk about a little later. But I had to get this deck for spring because it was just so stinking cute. And honestly, these strawberries on here really sold me. Like, they are so stinking cute. I don't even know if the color shows up correctly, uh, but the edges are come like this. They're edged in this a uh, really nice matte pink finish. And I'm obsessed with the core cards in this, which is definitely not something that is typical for me. So that was a really fun experience to have. Um, I really enjoy the colors. Again, like I said, they're used in here. It is Marseille, so they're all pip. The guidebook is really fun. But the core cards are all have these like super cute animals on it. So there's this like toad guy. Um, all the people in here are like kind of alien looking. They're all like blue. <laughs> there's coffee cups. Um, they're like barefoot, ripped jeans, like grungy. And um, like this is so me in the morning. She's just like, please, can I have some more? <laughs> The death card is super cute, which is one of my, like, favorite cards in a deck, usually. The flamingos with the hierophant. Like, I have nothing but good things to say about this deck. Uh, my only complaint is not really with the deck itself. Like, this isn't the creator's thing or anything. But um, the way that the deck is sized is as a playing card size, which I was really excited about because I was hoping it would have that, like, playing deck feel to it. Like, how does that devil not make you laugh? It's so cute. I'm trying to find the squid one. That's like my favorite. Um, it's my favorite depiction in the court cards, but as I was saying, uh, this deck is made of good quality cardstock, but it's size. Here we go. Here's like the squid arms. It's size, it's bulky and it's not flexible like you would expect with a regular card deck. Now, obviously a regular card deck is 52 cards and we have 78. So there is that difference there, but it just doesn't shuffle as nicely as I was hoping. I wish the cards were a little more flexible. Uh, they are quite stiff. Um, but I mean, it's going to last a long time, so I really can't complain. Let's see. There's the chariot with the snails. Strength with the, um, is that a Venus flytrap? I can't remember, but I used to be obsessed as a kid with those plants that could like eat other insects that appeared to be like alive. This one's riding a chicken. <laughs> I just love this deck so much. It's so fun. I love the like wings on the temperance card. The two of cups is awesome with the ghosts. So um, I must have blabbed on and passed the one with the squid arm. But that is the squid cake 
Marseille Tarot. I've been using it on and off all spring. I really enjoyed it. So this is what I mean with the shuffling. It's like I really have to like bend it to get them to like ripple shuffle. They're not like really flexible at all, which I don't know. With such a cute playing card style size, um, I just wish that they shuffled better. But I mean, you can shuffle overhand like super easily. And the guidebook is really, it's really fun. Um, there's like different colored sections, which I appreciate that makes things easier to find. She gives you like a description of the visual of the card, which I really appreciate, especially since I don't really know anything about Marseille. This is like my first introduction to it. So you get like a couple key words, you get like the divination message, and then you get what's visually going on. So you can kind of learn a little bit um, about Marseille if you don't know anything about that. So I really love this deck. I think it's super cute. Um, very spring-like. It's playful. Uh, it makes me giggle, but it also can be very serious, and I just really enjoyed getting to know this deck this spring. The second new deck that I acquired this spring was the Beautiful Creatures Tarot. This is the second edition with artwork by Jasmine Beckett Griffith and J.R. Rivera. Uh, this had been on my wish list for a long time, but I'd never really jumped on it because I had heard like not so great things about it, which I don't know why, because this deck is amazing. Uh, it comes in two halves, which is what it is. Um, I do appreciate that the box is kind of slim profile. Actually, I'll leave the guidebook out because the guidebook is great. I don't want to show you. So this deck comes with these amazing gilded edges. I love gilding. <laughs> I don't like gold. I love the colored gildings. Um, and this purple just does it for me. Uh, the gilding's not the best, like, out of the box mine came, like, this isn't glare, this is just where the it, gilding is rubbed off, and my copy came like that. It also came with, like, these little chips in it, but this isn't a super expensive deck, so the fact that I get gilding at all is, like, I'm not even mad about it. Uh, these are the bounce. The cards read like many of the other Jasmine Beckett Griffith decks. Um, now Jasmine Beckett Griffith decks aren't made with like, she doesn't make the art specifically for the deck. The deck curator usually like uses art or uses art she's already made for the cards. But I feel like a lot of these fit really well. Like this five of wands is amazing. <laughs> I love it so much with the dinosaurs and it's just, it's awesome. Um, the keywords on here, I don't always think of as the first thing that comes to mind. Like concealment is not what I think of when I think of the moon. I think of illumination, but the reverse of illumination is it's illuminating things we've concealed, right? So the keywords usually still work, even if it's not the first thing that usually comes to my mind. Now, if you're a beginner and you don't know anything about tarot, uh, then the cards might be harder to learn just because the images don't always give that like general cue to like what it means. But the, on the other hand, the keywords could help. So uh, you have to use your own liberty with that. I appreciate that all of the court cards are zodiac signs, like associated with their zodiac sign, which is fun. This for Five of Pentacles is also like everything. I love this so much. Um, this Two of Swords, also amazing. So it was a pleasantly surprising deck. I really enjoy working with it. It speaks so well. Um, it changed my perception or added to my, um, added to my mental library of different meanings for different cards. 
because of the different keywords in it. And overall, I just, it's a really, it's a really great deck. Um, I have had so much fun with it, getting to know it. And it's definitely one that I'm going to continue using within my practice. Uh, let me show you the guidebook here. So I also really enjoyed this guidebook. So within the guidebook... <laughs> I opened to my card, the death card. Okay. My only other issue with this is death is transformation. This is like typical, but like as someone who loves the death card, it's like kind of sad sometimes. But anyway, you get the card title. You get like a little message from the character in the card. You get a keyword and then it gives you like a description of the card and the story of the card as it relates to the meaning of like the divinatory meaning, which is amazing, I think, because it shows how much thought was actually put into choosing each of these artworks for the cards. Uh, and it doesn't just do it for the majors. It also does it for the minors, which is something that, sorry, I'm like way out of frame there. Uh, something that is not always done. Um, so I appreciate when that does happen. I love the habit as the devil card. <laughs> uh, and then it also gives you like upright and reverse meanings. So this is a really meaty guidebook. It's super interesting. I have enjoyed it so much. There are a couple bonus cards in here. I love the paranormal card. I wish there had been a sexier artwork to pick for this uh ur1 card but it's still fun and they give you lots of options for card readings for card spreads which i really appreciate some pretty standard but others are like actually made like for the guidebook which i always love like look at all of these it's just it's so much fun i i love this book um they did it all did a great table of contents where it actually lists out each card and what page it's on full color like this deck is awesome i don't know why people are always complaining about it because i think it's great so that was the beautiful creatures tarot a serious pleasant surprise and one that again will definitely be in my collection for a long time and I will continue to work with. The last deck that was new to my collection this spring was the Ask the Witch. Uh, this deck, again, another pleasant surprise. I'm not sure why people complain about this deck. I mean, I have a few ideas, but I honestly, I really enjoy it. This comes in another box inside of this box, which I didn't use, but anyway. Uh, the backs are kind of boring. It's a labyrinth, which I appreciate, like, that it's a labyrinth. There was intention behind it. It tells you, what, like, why the backs are that way in the guidebook. I just think it could have been a lot more sexy, especially when you see this artwork. So, this deck is a standard Rider Wade Smith deck, but the... My but the major arcana are all witches or like le witch legends. Um, and I think that the guidebook is really well done for this. Um, and I think as a beginner, you could probably get away with learning with this deck. This deck, the artwork reminds me of, um, which is one of the things that drew it me to it. It reminds me of Mr. Pickles which is a very disturbing <laughs> adult cartoon series um, that is about a demonic dog and all their like weird adventures. And the art's like super strange in it. And I looked it up. This is not done by the same artist, but it has that same feel. And I think this deck is amazing like this, especially with the way that their faces are all like this melty kind of thing. And it has all these like crazy colors and it's so vibrant and it just screams like spring and summer to me and I'm so happy that I got this deck 
Um, all of the pentacles are wearing this weird mask thing. Wheel of Fortune, like the fates for the Wheel of Fortune is that not amazing? But uh, as I was saying, all of the, oh, one more thing, the colors on this card, amazing. <laughs> all of the pentacles are wearing like this weird mask thing, like all the characters in the pentacles um, from the ace to the end of the courts. I don't know why. It's not explained why. It's strange. I wish they explained it because I'm sure there was a reason behind it. Uh, but it's just very odd. Like, as you can see here, she's wearing this like full face mask. So the king is wearing the wood mask. And you can see the faces of the characters in the other cards. But for some reason, Baba Yaga's the death card, Hecate's the moon card. Like, for some reason, they all wear these, like, masks. See? I would just wish it was explained, that's all. Lilith is the devil. So, it's really interesting. I love the, again, the funky art style. The bright colors, like, make me so happy. Um... And it's just very strange and, like, so, so cool. So, the guidebook is, again, like I said, great. I would recommend this uh, to beginners if you think this is, like, a fun art style and you want to approach it from learning about maybe some, like, witchy figures as well as learning, like, the traditional uh, meanings of the cards. I think this is great. The deck is a little clunky, like it's very chunky. This is not something you're riffle shuffling if you have small hands like I do, uh, but I don't have a problem side shuffling. Uh, they're also big enough to do the side riffle, which I really appreciate because um, I think I like that the artwork is like extra big. <laughs> I love when the artwork's bigger. Anyway, uh, the guidebook for the major arcana gives you the story of the witch and why they chose that witch to go with that card which i really love but it also gives you like they call it the positive and negative keywords it's basically the upright and reverse meaning for the cards so you get that uh for all of the majors and then the minors, you get a shorter description, but it does talk about what actually is happening in the card, which I greatly appreciate. Not just like a definitory thing, but like here's what's going on in the card visually and why that translates into the card meaning, which I think is super important because I'm an intuitive reader. I know the card meanings, but for me, weaving the story together with the card meanings and most importantly the picture and the way it all connects is more important to me than like this card means this <laughs> so yeah but you get the, again the keywords for upright and reversed or positive and negative as they say uh and there's the same again for the court cards it also has a great little l bit of information uh you get some a card spread and you also get these extra messages in the back so like you are it's called the witch's message it's like a little quote from the actual like person in the card itself I think it's supposed to be so um, like for instance for instance with the death card because that's that's how we roll here uh, with Baba Yaga says, prepare yourself for transformation. You die many times over in one existence, regenerating the skin that has become useless. Get closer to the center, let one cycle feed another, and let the world touch. Like, mm, so juicy. I love it so much. And it does it for all the cards, which is really amazing. So, again, this is my newest deck. I've had it for about three weeks. I'm obsessed. I'm using it constantly um it's it's been a really great addition to my collection all right let's get into some tried and true decks and then we'll get on to some pleasant surprises so uh my tried and true decks are all kind of oracle decks which is kind of funny so this is the oracle of the rose by rebecca campbell 
This one I've had for over a year now, and I actually use this all winter as well. This is not my favorite deck by her, but by no means do I dislike it, obviously, because I've been using it a lot. It does not come with these edges. I edged this deck myself. As soon as I bought this last year, it just like screamed uh, to me to have this edging, um, which I don't usually edge my decks. I have very few of my decks do I have edged. But um, yeah, she just wanted to have these like pinky purpley edges. So this deck is, I kind of misunderstood it when I first got it. I don't know why I feel like shuffling it. So here we are, some shuffle ASMR. That one was terrible. But um, when I first got it, and it says the Rose Oracle. So you think of the rose as like the actual rose itself. But when you read the guidebook, she's not talking about the rose in terms of the plant. So this isn't like a plant deck. Um, she's talking about the rose as the mother archetype. So the rose as a goddess, as the divine mother, mother which isn't a concept that I had approached before. Um, and I don't particularly use it that way. I use it just as a regular oracle deck. But um, I just love the art style that... Uh, Rebecca picks for like the artists that Rebecca picks for her decks I'm obsessed with their art style the very like dreamy ethereal colors the uh, real photo manipulation the otherworldly stuff I really enjoy this thorn card the anointed they're just I just really enjoy the artwork. I enjoy the messages. Uh, this is a very like feminine heavy deck. So when you're feeling like you need a little self care, you need to connect with your body more, connect with again, the divine mother of the rose. Um, this plant yourself here is so good. It's just a really, it's a really stunning deck and I enjoy working with it. The cardstock is super flexible, easy to shuffle. The Brothers of the Rose is a very interesting uh, card that talks about like the masculine supporting the divine feminine, which is very uh, refreshing to see in a deck. That perspective being brought in, very nature heavy, very like feminine empowerment. I love this Rose of Venus card with the kind of lovers tucked here behind the rose and the seashell here. Um, it's just a really, really nice deck. So highly recommend um, any of Rebecca Campbell's decks. I don't have any that I don't love. Um, in fact, they're pretty much all on my favorites list. So this is when I used... A lot. This has been on my altar. Uh, I pull it when I need just like a regular guidance message. It's been a part of my evening routine a lot. Um, and it does make a nice clarifier. The guidebook is pretty standard. Uh, you get like the keywords, the message of the card, and then a question which I like that she poses. There is a lot of explanation in the front about the particular idea behind the deck, why she chose to do the Rose Oracle and things. So I highly recommend reading like the introduction to this guidebook because she did put a lot into it and it'll help you understand the deck more. I know that when this first came out, a lot of people were very like, including myself, were very kind of like turned off almost when they bought it because they were confused because we thought it was going to be like a rose deck, which is not is not what it is, but reading the guidebook clears all that up and it's, it's a great deck. Another deck that I used heavily this spring and I'm still using is the Seasons of the Witch Beltane Oracle. Um, I use this again, tried and true. I use this all year. Um, I don't just use it during the spring. I also use the Samhain one all year. I'm not someone who celebrates the Wheel of the Year, but I love these decks and the energy of the season that's contained within it. Again, I feel like shuffling uh, is great. The cardstock is amazing, super flexible. 
All the decks have a corresponding like color of gilding. Again, gold isn't my favorite, but I appreciate that this one's kind of like a yellowy, like very yellowy gold. Matches the backs. Super stunning. So yeah, I, I can't say enough about these decks. The artwork isn't really my style, but uh, it has been growing on me since I have been using the deck. I love the different keywords in here. The messages in the guidebook are great. I like that I can read this intuitively based on the keyword and the uh, little poem kind of at the bottom of the cards. I love this surrender card here. But if I want to look at the guidebook, the guidebook has a lot to offer. There are like specific cards like hand fasting and things that have to do with uh Beltane the fire festival but there's also lots of cards that just have to do with like spring in general the idea of spring uh different deities associated with it so I don't find that this is like a a deck that's not accessible to me even though I don't personally celebrate the wheel of the year uh, and it's, it's a really fun deck and I really enjoy working with it again, like I said, um, all year long. Again, this is a great clarifier. I used it in some of my card readings that I did over on my Instagram, like the pick a cards, uh, and the guidebook is super fun. Um, you get like, you know, a good decent message for each one. Some of them have spells after it. Some of them explain like things about the goddess. Um, you get like uh, card spreads in the beginning. So I just really enjoy this series of decks. They're coming out with two new ones this year and I'm really looking forward to adding them to my collection. I've already pre-ordered them. I don't usually pre-order things, but that happened. <laughs> So yeah, that is the Seasons of the Witch Beltane Oracle. Love that. Ooh. This is a, another deck that I've been using a lot this spring. This is the Alice in Wonderland Oracle. I'm not going to show too much of it because I just recently did a review on this deck with a walkthrough of all the cards, which I'll leave the link below. But this deck is just, she's amazing. You can do shadow work with her. You can do regular card readings. She's amazing for things like uh, week ahead spreads, month ahead spreads. Uh, as a clarifier, I use her to make decisions sometimes. Uh, she's just, a, it's a really great deck. Really great reader. Great images. Fun guidebook. Um, if you're interested in seeing this one more in depth, definitely go check out that video. But I don't want to make this video super long. Um, when I already have that, that resource for you. So, all right, moving into pleasant surprises. Um, this deck, Sacred Cycles, I've had this one for a long time. I got this in a subscription box. I definitely would not have purchased it on my own. I did not like it when I first got it. It's not something I can read intuitively, but I love this for readings at night before I go to bed. If I don't want to sit in my sacred space here in my little office area and I want to just kind of like hang out in bed and pull a card and get a really nice message before I go to sleep, this deck is great for that, I find. Um, it has different cycles in it, which I appreciate. Um, it has the seasons in it. It has the female reproductive system represented in it. Um, all through, you know, all seasons of that. Maiden Mother Crone is in here. Um, things have to do with pleasure are in here. And the moon phases. It's just a really interesting deck. And the messages are beautiful. Again, this is never something I would have picked up for myself. I really, art style really isn't my thing. But the more that I work with it, the more it grows on me. And I, for some reason this spring, I just really bonded with this deck more than I have in the past. 
and now it feels like it has more of a home in my collection, which is really nice. So that's the Sacred Cycles Oracle. The guidebook is really fun. It has like a phrase and then uh, your message. And it also comes with a journal prompt, which is fun. Um, they're broken up by the different sections. So like there'll be the uh, celestial moon section. There's the hormonal cycle, cycle of life, plants. It's just a really interesting little oracle deck. Not one that I can read intuitively so much. We love the wolf card. But uh, one that's very nice if you want to actually like take the time to read a little message for yourself. Um, I don't know. I was just pleasantly surprised by this. And was nice to connect with this deck this season in any way. Another deck that really surprised me that I've owned for a while is the Essential Oils Healing Deck. And I got this as a gift and I don't know why, but I put it in like a different spot and I totally forgot about it. Like it wasn't even on my radar in my collection. Um, and when I was doing a recent video with the uh, 21 tarot questions, uh, one of my pet peeves about decks was that uh, things like goddess decks and animal decks and plant decks uh, don't always have a lot of information about the particular plant. It just has, or goddess, animal, it just has the divinatory meaning or like a very like two sentence, nothing to chew on type of explanation, right? And this deck uh, has that. Uh, it is focused, of course, on the essential oil. Um, it talks about the essential oil the uses for it, but there's also a giant section on the actual, like, plant, like, uh, eucalyptus here. It has, actually, before we get into that, let's look at the, let's look at the cards. So, the cards, I love the artwork on the cards. It's so beautiful. Um, the cards are fairly big, but it has the name of the plant it has like its main function or some of its main functions which you can use as an oracle message i don't think this is meant to be a divination deck but it works um i think as such um birch is one that i had on my altar it has little symbols to show you how you can use it i don't have a lot of the oils in this deck but i do have some so when it does come up um, I am able to do that, but also like when ginger comes up, I have ginger in my kitchen, right? Like the actual plant, I can use that plant medicine in my workings. Um, and I kind of get the hint from the card, right? So I, you don't have to use it as the oils. You can use the actual like whole plants, um, or, you know, herbs, whatever in your spells or cooking or anything like that. Incense. So it's a really great deck. It's really fun. Definitely pleasantly surprised. I found that I, throughout the spring, would pull a card and then set it on my altar as kind of a reminder to work with that plant medicine. Um, right as kind of winter ended, I went on a walk and we had a really bad storm. And I picked up a bunch of birch and then I forgot about it because like the birch bark had fallen on the ground. So um, I don't like to pull birch bark off of the tree because that hurts the tree. But if it's on the ground, you know, fair game. <laughs> um, and I forgot about it. And then I pulled this card and put it on my altar and it reminded me to kind of work with that magic more. So that was really fun to use. Um, and then in the guidebook here, it's, um, let's find birch because I just talked about birch. So you have the name of the card, you have how the symbols for how you can use the oil, which is explained in there. You have the um, main like 
chosen function of the herb or plant. And then you have an actual like explanation. So the Anishabi, apologies if I said that incorrectly, in North America made their canoes with birch bark since carefully peeled bark could be reversed with its waterproof side facing outward. As part of their canoe building, they thanked the spirits of the forest for providing them with strength and protection. They also buried their dead wrapped in birch bark, made medicines for stomach cramps and diseases of the blood from birch roots and bark. The Druids, an ancient people of Britain and France, whose lives and spiritual beliefs were closely linked to nature, called the birch the Lady of the Woods for its beauty and elegance. The tree, the trees were symbols of renewal, rebirth, and inception. In Wales, birch is considered the tree of love and is used to make love tokens. The Celts believed that those born between December 24th and January 20th were born under the spirit of the birch tree and that the tree could protect anyone against evil spirits and psychic attacks. Birch essential oil contains all these different things, all which give the oil its potent medicinal qualities. It's a powerful healer of painful joints and connective tissue, as well as bones, helping to rebuild these bodily parts, while also alleviating pain in these areas. In the same way that birch essential oil can help rebuild the physical body, it can help rebuild courage and strengthen the psyche. It is said to support those who are weak-willed or too flexible, who don't have the strength to stay committed to their own needs or beliefs. It can also address feelings of fear, alienation, and being unsupported, as well as, transform as, well as transform cowardice into courage. And then it gives you different uses and safety. And... Like, hello, that is, like, the best animal, like, that is the best description of, like, history of a plant that I've ever seen in a deck. And it's not even, like, it's not even made for divination, right? But it works so well as a witch's tool, even if you aren't into oils and you want to work more, more and you want to work more with plant magic, plants that like you can actually find and are part of your natural environment and that you can get like, you know, dried herbs of or are in your kitchen. Like this is just, it was such a pleasant surprise. And I can't believe that I was sitting on this deck for years and then I like forgot about it. Like, um, amazing. So Definitely a favorite of the spring and another great pleasant surprise. All right, we're getting close to the end here. Um, this was my pleasant surprise tarot deck of the month. This is the Dark Wood Tarot. And I got this earlier this year and I opened it and I read the guidebook and then I just like didn't really connect with it. And then a couple of months ago, I wanted to pull this out. It's literally been on my desk since like... It's, it's been amazing. The journey of this deck, the artwork in this deck, I just, this Queen of Pentacles is everything. <laughs> I didn't think I would like this because um, usually I like decks that have more photorealistic imagery in them. However, this guidebook oh my oh my oh my um it's amazing sasha graham is like one of my new favorite deck creators i'm now like on a hunt to collect all her decks uh haunted house tarot is one that's always like on my altar as of late this year and it's just amazing so the deck itself, like the imagery is great, but the real magic comes in when you begin to look at the guidebook. I love that the pentacles are apples. I think that's amazing. I feel like this is very like witch of the dark wood oriented, which is a, it's stunning. The 10 of cups being the wolf pack, like is everything um five of i think it's wands in here is one of my favorite i adore all the bats the animals there's vampires this moon is just like mm, so good 
there are a few like creepy clowns and like different characters in here. I want to show you. The Seven of Swords is really fun. This is probably the first fool in a deck ever that I've actually liked. <laughs> Usually I really don't like the fool card, but I do appreciate that. Here we go. The Five of Wands with these little like devil sprite things like fighting. It's just so like, I love it. It's so fun. And all the little like wispy smoke water things. It's just... I really appreciate this. Abigail Larson, the artist, did an amazing job with this deck. Uh, and the guidebook is phenomenal. Okay. So the deck actually takes you through the journey of the fool through the wood. Like, I'm not super jazzed about the backstory of the character, but that doesn't really matter. So with each major arcana, you get the archetype that the card represents, which to me is the whole thing about the major arcana, right? They're all archetypes that we get to work with and that we get to see reflected in our own journey throughout our lives. So the fact that it tells you what the archetype is means everything to me. I love it so much. Then it has like a quick little like... Um, something that you might see on the bottom of like a card answers you seek stand before you uh what else love is the unifying expansive and binding force of the universe it's like your little like oracle message then you get into the part of the story so how the witch which is the fool right encountered this character, engage with this character, work with this character, what the character represents within the forest, not only in the major arcana, but also the minor as well. Uh, it's just absolutely chef's kiss. So good. You get full color prints of the card and you also get the meaning which is kind of like the key phrases and then the shadow, which is, you know, the, the reverse meaning, but I highly recommend this. I love this. Um, it's a typical Llewellyn deck with like their cardstock. So I like their cardstock is one of my favorites because I have tiny hands and as a child, I was obsessed with playing cards. And I think that was left over because I was definitely a tarot reader in my past life. Um, but it just shuffles so beautifully. It's flexible. The cards are a little smaller, so it's easy for me to wrap my hands around. I don't have to strain my hands to actually shuffle. I'm sorry, I bet that was pretty loud, but it's just so satisfying. And as someone who can't ruffle shuffle a lot of her decks because of my hands being so tiny, I really appreciate Llewellyn's cardstock. That doesn't have anything to do specifically with this deck, but um, this deck definitely falls into that category, which I appreciate. This also didn't chip as bad as the... Um, Terra the Vampires did, which I appreciated, but definitely pleasantly surprised. We are now besties. Um, she loves on my desk and I don't have enough good things to say about her. So I left a card in here. The Nine of Cups. <laughs> All right. So that is the Darkwood Tarot. So moving on, I have three honorable mentions to wrap this up. This is a very long video. Um, so hopefully you're enjoying it. But I have three honorable mentions to wrap this up. And then one that I'm like iffy about. So my three honorable mentions are the Happy Tarot, the Ritual Tarot, and the Angel Answers Oracle. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because I mentioned them a lot or have separate videos on them. 
but um, these are ones that are just kind of like really in the background this month. I always use this deck, so like it's going to be in all my videos. This is the Angel's, Angel Answers Oracle. The guidebook, I don't even, like I never take it out of the box, don't think about it at all. The images do absolutely nothing for me, but this card deck is like a magic eight ball style, and if you literally want to ask those yes or no questions, should I do this? Should I do that? What's the outcome of this choice versus that choice? Like the day to day, like I need a friggin' answer on this. This card is great. This deck is great. And even if, if you're like, I want to ask this from all the angles, um, it will like literally talk to you. It will give you multiple cards to like discuss it with you, which I appreciate, but it also does have like yes and no cards in it. So you don't always get the yes and no like you want to, <laughs> uh, but she tells you the truth. There's a let go card, which you just saw. And sometimes it's just like, you know what? Quit asking and just like go do the thing, like let go of ruminating on it and just like move on. Um, so me and this deck are very close. I use her all the time. Uh, and it's just one of those decks that's like super useful in my practice. So honorable mention. This next deck is an honorable mention I feel for spring just because it's so fun. Um, this deck I put in my 21 uh, tarot questions video as my guilty pleasure stack because it's just so not like anything else that I own. It's really not my like style. I wouldn't pick this deck, but I was really drawn to it for some reason. And it's just so fun when you need like a lighthearted pick me up when you want those like bright colors and you just want to play and like lift your mood, be a little silly and have a good time. Um, this is a great little deck and I think it's great for spring just because of all like, again, those colors, like the world coming back to life, that like playful energy that comes with spring after a long winter, especially where I live since we get snow. So like once the sun comes out and the snow melts, like literally you can see everyone emerge. Like people are out doing things. People are out to eat again. You see everybody at the gas station, like in their t-shirts, like ready to rock. <laughs> Um, and I don't know, it just reminds me of that, of that time of year. So this is a really fun, uh, deck just as like an honorable mention for the spring. I don't use it a ton cause I use, you know, my other decks on the daily, but I did use it, uh, a handful of times during the spring and I wanted to, to mention it because of that. So that is the happy tarot it has a little white book, um, which is really fun. It gives you like a reason to be happy as it relates to the card meaning itself, which is really fun. I'm not going to show you. I'm just trying to get it back in the box. Um, but if you want to listen to more about that, I talked about that in my 21 tarot questions video. And then the last honorable mention is the ritual tarot. And this deck has just kind of opened up my whole world into looking at cards without the meaning. And there's an Oracle deck by another independent creator, which I definitely have on my wish list now called, I believe it's the Nameless Oracle. I'm going to, I'll link it. But, um, it's, that is also just, uh, images without keywords. And I think that with the ritual tarot, if I read her last email correctly, um, she's not going to actually print it without titles anymore. The new version is going to have titles and that's like what it's going to be. Um, and I'm so glad that I got this version of it because... There's just something about the way the deck speaks without the words. There is a guidebook, but it's mostly just like keywords, unless it's for the major arcana. So like it takes that crutch away and makes me commune with 
the divine mixed with my understanding of the card. And sometimes I see the card as the wrong one, I guess you could say, because the, the guidebook does uh, have pictures of the cards and tells you which card is which, which I do need to look up sometimes. Um, and it's interesting when that does happen because I can interpret the card as what I think it is. And then when I read the guidebook and notice that it's a different card, it like helps me shift it's like an extra layer of divination meaning almost because it's the shift between the two um, and showing me how I can change my perspective uh, on a certain thing based on how I originally interpreted it and then how what the actual like meaning of the card is based on its um, assigned association. And I don't know, this deck has gotten me really obsessed with cards in general that don't have words on them and sorry I just got a tickle in my throat and has uh prompted me with the idea to maybe take some of my to buy some additional Rebecca Campbell decks maybe or see if I can find some used copies and then trim them down to just the artwork I think that would be super fun and then like make a deck full of all of my own like artwork done by the two artists that do Rebecca Campbell's decks. So Danielle Noel and I'm so sorry I can't think of the other lady's name off the top of my head but if I can get my hands on some used copies of those decks um, I definitely want to to do that project. I'm not going to do it to my decks that I own because they're like some of my favorite decks and I don't want to I don't want to ruin any of them but yeah, I think that would be a fun project, and it's been a, that deck has been a fun gateway into exploring, um, the experience of divination without the crutch of the assigned meaning, and just using the image itself. I already do that because I'm an intuitive reader, but it's just, I don't know, it's been so fun. All right, and then the last deck I want to talk to you about for my, my spring deck roundup here is this deck and I'm not sure exactly what I want to say about this deck other than I'm not sure if we're going to get along. I picked up this deck at the same time that I picked up the Ask the Witch Tarot and at first I was like, because of the concept of this deck, I was like, this is going to be the best thing ever. This is actually two decks in one. Um, my box came like this, all beat up, straight from Llewellyn. Not super excited about that. Um, but what this deck is, or what these decks are, is the... Are two decks to represent the as above, so below idea. So it's tarot through the lens of the above and the below. So one deck has the above meanings and one deck has the below meanings. The guidebook I read cover to cover, I did find it quite interesting. Um, the beginning talks a lot about the idea of the deck, why they chose to do it, why they called it the Book of Shadows, and how a Book of Shadows is like tarot which I found quite interesting. There is a great deal of information on the as above deck, but the slow below deck has very small amount of information about it. The as above deck talks a lot about each card, even in the minor arcana, it tells you the meaning of the uh, image and the concept associated with it. And then the so below is really disappointing because even though the imagery of it is somewhat unique, just because it does follow the Rider Wade Smith system, you don't really get a description of what's going on in the card. Most of the time, it's just a generic divination meaning, which was disappointing after seeing so much thought put into the first deck. 
I actually filmed an hour long walkthrough of my first impressions of this deck, which I was going to share with you. But um, as the cards were laying down, I had this glare here, um, kind of like this, and you couldn't even see the card, which was really, was really sad to realize after the fact. But I was a little salty, so maybe you didn't want to listen to me being salty for, um, for an hour. But I'm going to try to keep this this brief. Um, the As Above deck is interesting. The Major Arcana I enjoy quite a lot. I love the Book of Shadows for the Hierophant. Uh, there's the different celebrations of the Wheel of the Year. This is um, definitely based in witchcraft and more of a like traditional... Uh, celebration of it, but doesn't confine you to that idea. Um, it explains why it chose each card. I love the omens for the tower card as well. Um, so this, the major arcana, I find quite interesting. The suits each have a theme to them, which I appreciate. However, I would, I think it would have been more useful or more, or executed better if they put keywords on it. So the earth suit all has these gnomes on it, but it's about different places in nature. And it's a little hard to identify the different places in nature just based on the images as a lot of them look the same, although I do love this one. It doesn't seem to have a ton to do with the traditional association of that card. However, it might because I have not fully um, dove into this. I used it for a couple weeks and then kind of put it away. Um, the court cards, the page is the element itself. The knight is the maiden, the queen is the mother, and the king is the crone, which I do appreciate. The air suit is divinatory tools. So you have like the crystal ball gazing, you have familiars, you have palmistry. Um, I don't remember what that one is. You have I Ching, the chakras. Uh, so different kind of tools, tarot, obviously. And then you have the elements. The description of the court cards is quite lacking. Um, I wish there was more to talk about with the idea of the crone of air, but it's just like two sentences that doesn't really have a, like one sentence that doesn't have much to do. The fire sign are the planets and the, uh, kind of gods associated with the planets. I'm going to go faster because this isn't meant to be a review of this deck. I'm just trying to... I'm just sharing my experience with it because that was part of my spring. Um, <laughs> and then the water suit is goddesses. Which again, I wish they had put the name of the goddess on the card, but it's just seven of water. So you have to like remember what they all are. Which... I'm sure if you know, if you spent a lot of time with the deck, you would know, but um, it just kind of makes the reading process a little less intuitive, which is a shame. The So Below deck. <laughs> ah, okay. I appreciate the idea of this deck. It's supposed to be how the tarot and the kind of more abstract themes of it, which we saw in the above tarot, manifests in our world. So there's cards in here that are like my favorite cards in a deck ever to represent that. Like the high priestess, this girl talking to her higher self, literally gold. Like love this card. I also really enjoy this empress, the 10 of swords no the ten of wands sorry in this deck is amazing hero font's amazing and then there's other cards which i absolutely despise 
this deck is very heavily laced with a lot of family um, images. Some of these images seem to be like repeatedly overdone. Again, I'm just going to go fast because this isn't supposed to be a long-winded review of this deck. Um, but although I will do one in the future after I learn more about it if you're interested. Um, each suit has its own like helper. So the gnomes continue throughout. Um, again, a lot of these cards are very beautifully done. My major issue is one, I don't really personally find family gatherings, family workings to be like the best times. Um, that's a personal issue. I'm not someone who is super nostalgic about family things. Family gatherings are like my least favorite thing to do. I don't have a family myself. My children have fur. Um, so I find it hard to connect with the deck in that way. Although I do see how that probably connects widely with most people. Love this Nine of Swords. It is a Ten of Swords. This Ten of Swords with the Phoenix and just like rising from the ashes as the Ten of Swords. Literally like favorite thing ever. The Queens in this deck I have a huge issue with. To me... The queen energy is like, some of these don't make sense either. Like three of wands. How is the mailman while she's like, this doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, however, a celebration as Halloween party, I am totally here for it. Although it'd be a celebration of one and my husband, <laughs> me and my husband. But anyway, um, the queens in this deck all have another person in them it's like the they're all depictions of like the generic mom doing her mom thing in the world as the queen and there's nothing wrong with that right part of the empress energy is that queen energy right the queens are different facets of the empress really like on steroids in my opinion however i see queens as the expression of that suit archetype in its like most empowered badass form and as a sovereign woman who is very into personal power the way that these are depicted really grinds my gears and i'm going to try not to rant about this forever i've already been talking about this dick for like 10 minutes but i only pulled out three because i think this makes my point but all the queens have another person in them the queen in the suit that's missing here is i think it's earth is a woman walking behind a man through a garden I can appreciate that the Queen of Cups is being vulnerable here. The description in the guidebook says that the woman is comforting someone. But this is not a woman, it's a man. Because in the King of Cups, they identify this as he teaching these people. And this is not meant to be a comment on gender. But to me, this implies like a very stereotypical, like, here's this woman having a breakdown and here's this guy trying to comfort her. And then the queen of wands is like pure sexuality, goes after what she wants and like gets it. Like to me, that's who the queen of wands is. And here she's like teaching this girl not to play with fire, like holding her back. And then in the queen of swords, I don't know what she's doing, but this doesn't seem like a straight to the facts, like cold, hard truth, absolutely in her mental power, commanding things, ordering things like it just, I just, I just can't, I just can't. <laughs> the Queens are important to me and this deck does not do them justice in my opinion. However, you know, I can see how this might resonate with other people. It's just not, it's not for me. So, 
I'm not writing this deck off. I wanted to mention it because I did acquire it and I did make that video about it, which I will never be posting. I look forward to picking this up again and hopefully connecting with it better, allowing my perception to be changed, um, utilizing it in a bit of a better way, but... For a deck that had so much potential, I'm really just, like, upset with it. <laughs> um, so, yeah. All right, you guys. That was my spring deck collection. Decks I use this spring. Decks I acquired. Old favorites. New favorites. Honorable mentions. And a deck that I'm very salty about. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed. I will leave anything linked below that you'd like to check out for yourself. I hope that I was able to keep you company. And I'd love to hear in the description below. Did I mention any of your favorites? Are any of these now on your wish list? Uh, let's talk about all the deck things. And with all that being said, I will see you guys again soon. Take care, guys. Bye.